What's up everyone? Scott the Chart Hammer here. It's hot. <laughs> it's nine o'clock at night and it's still, it's still 96 degrees outside. Just par for the course here in Oregon. Like I said, we don't have seasons. We just have temperature and weather. It doesn't matter what the calendar says. It doesn't matter what season you think it is. We've had weeks of like 70 degrees and kind of sunny skies, a little windy, but out of nowhere, 100 degree days. I'm beat. But it's a good beat because I just had a successful day bass fishing out on the river. And my buddy Daniel, who I've gone clamming with a bunch, he invited me to hit up the river on his boat and do some exploring. And a little of the old summertime river bassin. So before we get into the fishing, I'll ask you guys if you haven't already to please hit that subscribe button down there. And then, and then, oh, see, I'm tired. And the notify bell next to it and click all notifications so you guys will be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's a fish. There you go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! All right, guys, check that out. Hell yeah. That's a... Uh... That's a good first fish. Yeah. Look at that second cast. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I cast the lipless crank. Yeah, I need to add some weight to this. <laughs> I don't usually lose my weights from snagging. I lose them from just a stupid thing that happens whenever I fish a Texas rig when I cast and then my reel will stop, which causes everything on the end of the line to just snap off and go flying. Oh yeah, I, I barely got to move this rod to cast it. What rod is that one? It's the seven foot two medium action sticks rod. I hit bottom quick. I thought that was a bite. That stopped my heart for a second. Oh, come back for it. I just got hit. You did? Yeah. Something grabbed, shook, and ran. Oh, yep. This bug is dancing on the surface right here. Something, I just saw bronze. A little small bit of bronze come up and swipe at it. <laughs> oh, that might not be bass. No, that was real small, whatever that was. Oh, I actually stopped and look at my plastic from that last bite I had, and I lost one of the appendages. Yeah. Not a bad one. It's a large mouth. It is. Look at that. Hell yeah. I like that. Thought I felt that. You don't catch very many large here. No. That's why I switched to the Texas rig. Little tiny dude. Mm -hmm. Alright. You're the, you might be my one fish for the trip, so you get a sniff. <sighs> you ever done it? <laughs> Tony, once you do it, you keep wanting to do it. Yeah, there's something else that hit. It wasn't just that fish. Like the first bite I had was much bigger. Oh, just got tapped again. Yep, come on. Forget this isn't my usual Texas rig rod. I gotta keep my finger on my line to feel for the bite. It's not like the, it's not like the rod I usually use. It's so sensitive. I feel absolutely everything that's happening on the end of the line. Oh, 
it's like two feet deep here, that's why. <laughs> I was like, why am I hitting rocks? <laughs> then I saw that hydrilla bush and then I could see the rocks beneath it. Oh, this might be Ned Rig territory. No, you neither really do. Some serious exploring and figure out where the good spots are at. Mm-hmm. So we can get a game plan to come out here and be serious about it. Mm-hmm. That's how the pros do it. Yeah, they come out here and that, scout. And yeah, pre-fishing. Try that again. Oh, I got hit. <laughs> might be the one. Might be the one that hit me and then ran to you. That was a big one. That was a big one. All right. Time to start losing my three-eighth ounce tungsten. Oh, perfect. This is not as accessible as uh, the other times. Yeah, well, half of why we're here is exploratory. Yeah, we have no idea. <laughs> Three eighths ounce tungsten just means I'll just get where I'm going faster. That's shaking his head pretty good. I got really light stuff here though. Big, but it's not bad. Uh, right behind you. Oh yeah, about a pound and a half. Nice one for uh, fish tacos. Yeah. It's not very deep right there. It's like three, four feet. It didn't take long to hit the bottom. Wow. Did you see that? Yeah. I, wasn't even I, saw, for I that. saw that load up. I wasn't even prepared. I was just like sitting there like, oh, I can't see it. Go off for small ways and sometimes you find a load. It's because it's fishing with me. The impossibilities are endless. I see them all the time. I just never catch them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come back. Right? That was a pike minnow bite. Just real fast. Yep. So in a nutshell, the biggest thing we learned is the Willamette River in our area is a lot shallower than we thought. I've got a certain number of fishing guys I've talked to who kind of led me astray, and you know who you are. But no, we still found some decent holes, lost about, you know, $15 worth of tungsten, you know, usual river fishing things. Just means we got a little bit better of an idea for the next time we head out there. And maybe some other spots for some, uh some winter style fishing that we'll, we'll, we'll keep secret. Stay tuned to watch that stuff. Which of course leads me to ask what you guys thought down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, if you guys don't want to miss out on that stuff that's going to come here in the winter, click that subscribe button down there and the notify bell next to it and click all notifications so you guys won't miss a single video. All right, I'm done for the day. I'm going to shower. I'm going to call today. So I'm going to tell you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing.